little fox. The enormous turnip. One day, a farmer planted a turnip seed. Turnip, grow big and grow strong. Hmm. He talks to that turnip every day. Finally, the turnip was ready. The farmer pulled the turnip, but the turnip didn't move. Help me pull the turnip. Pull harder. I'm pulling very hard. But the turnip didn't move. What are you doing? We're pulling this turnip. My dog and I can help you. I'm pulling the boy. I'm pulling the woman. I'm pulling my husband. And I'm pulling the turnip. But the turnip didn't move. Hey, come and help us! What are you doing? We're pulling this turnip. Okay, everyone, let's count to three. One, two, three. The turnip moved a little bit. Let's give up. Maybe the turnip is too big. Maybe the turnip is too heavy. What are you doing? We're trying to pull this turnip. I can help you. You, you a little mouse? <laughs> <laughs> if we work together, we can pull this turnip out. Let's try one more time. Is everyone ready? Ready! Come on, pull! Harder! Heave ho! I think it's moving! Ouch! My tail! Stop moaning! Pull! The turnip is moving! We did it together! We make a good team! Tomorrow, I will plant pumpkins. Is that a good idea? Little Red Riding Hood Once upon a time, there lived a very sweet girl. She always wore a red cape with a hood. So everyone called her Little Red Riding Hood. What a beautiful day it is! Hello, Birdie. Good morning, Mr. Squirrel. One day, Little Red Riding Hood's mother had some bad news. Your grandma is sick. I made her some food, but I can't take it to her. Poor grandma. I'll take it, mother. What a good girl you are. Here's the food. Be careful going through the forest. I will. Goodbye, mother. Grandma lived on the other side of the forest. So Little Red Riding Hood took the basket and left for Grandma's. In the forest lived a big, bad, and very hungry wolf. There's nothing to eat in this forest. I'm sick of squirrels. The rabbits taste rotten. I want something new and yummy. Just then, Little Red Riding Hood walked by. She stopped when she saw the wolf. Oh, hello, Mr. Wolf. Now, she looks very tasty. Good day, little girl. Where are you going? 
to my grandma's house. She's very sick. Talking to strangers, especially hungry ones, is dangerous. But Little Red Riding Hood did not know that. That's too bad. Where does your grandma live? Maybe I can visit her too. She lives on the other side of the forest. It's very easy to find. Hurry along then. You mustn't keep Grandma waiting. So Little Red Riding Hood continued on her way. The wolf watched her go. He had a plan. I'll run to her grandma's house and wait. Then, when she comes, the wolf ran through the forest to grandma's house. Hello, anybody home? There was no answer. The house looked empty. Where could grandma be? Just then. The wolf heard Little Red Riding Hood coming up to the house, so the wolf put on Grandma's shawl. Then he jumped into the bed. Knock knock. Who's there? It's Little Red Riding Hood, Grandma. I brought some food for you. Oh, how lovely! Come inside, dear. Grandma. What's wrong with your voice? It's this terrible cold. Grandma, what big arms you have! All the better to hug you with, my dear. Grandma, what big ears you have! All the better to hear you with, my dear. Grandma, what? Big eyes you have. All the better to see you with, my dear. Grandma, what big teeth you have! All the better to eat you with, my dear. Poor little Red Riding Hood. Ah! Help! Help! There's no one to help you. You're mine now. The wolf caught her with his big arms. He opened his mouth. He was about to bite her with his big, sharp teeth when. What's going on? I'm going to eat up your granddaughter. Yum! <laughs> well, I was just about to make some soup. Let me put some vegetables in. Then you can put her in too. Grandma, don't worry. Grandma wasn't really going to let the wolf eat Little Red Riding Hood. Grandma had a plan too. Hurry up! I'm starving. Hold your horses. I'm almost done. The vegetables Grandma put in the pot were hot chili peppers. She stirred the soup with a big wooden spoon. <laughs> Mmm. -hmm. Taste this, Mr. Wolf. <coughs> ah, it's burning my mouth. Oh no! Here, eat this. You'll feel better. <coughs> Ow! My mouth is on fire. Ow! Oh dear! Have some water. <coughs> ah! Help! Get me out of here! Ah! With his mouth, tongue, and throat on fire, the wolf ran out of Grandma's house as fast as he could. They never saw him again. Now, Little Red Riding Hood, did you learn your lesson? Yes, Grandma. I'll never speak to strangers again, and I'll never eat Grandma's soup. The end. Anansi and the melon. Anansi the spider sat in a tall tree, watching goat work in his garden. Goat's melons look delicious, thought Anansi. 
The spider loved fruit, but he was too lazy to grow anything himself. When Goat left, Anansi dropped into the garden. With a thorn, he carved a hole in a melon. He crawled inside and began to eat, and eat and eat. Anansi rubbed his full belly. Goat will be back soon, he said. I must go. He tried to crawl out through the hole, but now he was too fat. I'll wait until I'm thin again. Anansi grew bored while he waited. When Goat returned, Anansi got an idea. He loved to play tricks. He could trick Goat. Goat picked up the melon. Ow! Anansi yelped. Who said that? Goat cried, looking around. Me, replied the melon. Goat blinked. Melons can't talk. Yes, we can. This is incredible, said Goat. I must show the queen. He hurried toward the palace. Rattlesnake saw him. Where are you going? She called. I'm taking this melon to the queen, replied Goat. It talks. That's silly. <laughs> Rattlesnake laughed. As silly as... A kind rattlesnake, said the melon. Rattlesnake scowled. <gasps> Who said that? I told you, this melon talks, said Goat. Amazing, said Rattlesnake. I will go with you. Goat and Rattlesnake headed toward the palace. More animals heard the melon talking. They followed Goat and Rattlesnake to the palace. Goat bowed. Your Majesty, we brought you a melon. The Queen frowned. I already have plenty of melons. This melon is unique, explained Goat proudly. It can talk. The Queen stepped closer. Speak, melon, she ordered. But the melon stayed quiet. Melon, I order you to speak. Still, the melon was silent. What a silly melon, the queen snapped. Silly, echoed the melon. You're the one who's talking to a melon. The queen's face turned bright red. She picked up the melon and flung it with all her might. The melon hit a tree in Goat's garden and shattered into pieces. Anansi crawled out of the melon. I'm thin again, he said happily. I'm hungry too. He scurried up a nearby banana tree. Goat returned to his garden. The melons, I'm never listening to you again. Good idea, called a banana. Talking melons always bring trouble. Thirsty Pockets One day, Ali went to a dinner party at his friend's house. There were four guests, including Ali. Two of them were merchants. And the third was a government official. Ali did not know the merchants, but he recognized the government official. People said that this man was dishonest and a thief. But Ali was wise and did not believe everything he heard. The men were hungry. As they waited for dinner, they chatted pleasantly. Ali's friend served many delicious things to eat. There was soup, rice, meats, and many kinds of fruit. 
But when it was time to eat, Ali's friend excused himself. I am sorry, said the host. But my son was in a terrible accident. I must go to him so I cannot eat with you. Please enjoy yourselves and eat freely. I only ask that you pray for my son. The host left with those words. Before they ate, the guests all prayed to Allah. The government official sat next to Ali. He was eating very fast. He was stuffing his mouth and his pockets with food. He filled his pockets with everything he could reach. The two merchants stared at the government official. They were shocked by his behavior. They were strangers to this town. So they did not say anything to the rude official. Ali quietly picked up a teapot. He poured tea into the man's pocket. The man started shouting at Ali. What are you doing? Are you crazy? He said angrily. Excuse me, answered Ali. I saw that your pockets were hungry. I thought they might be thirsty, too. The government official was embarrassed and said nothing more. The Greatest Bridegroom Long, long ago, a mole couple's daughter, Molly, was ready to marry. In the mole village, Moeller was the best available bridegroom. However, Father Mole and Mother Mole were not satisfied with him. Isn't there a better bridegroom? asked Molly's mother. Our Molly must marry the greatest bridegroom, said her father. Father Mole and Mother Mole discussed the matter. Who do you think is the greatest of all? Father wondered aloud. I think the sun is the greatest, Mother answered. Father Mole went to the sun. Gosh, it's so hot. Son, are you the greatest of all? He asked. No, I'm not. When the cloud comes and covers me, I can't even show my face. The cloud is the greatest. The sun replied. Oh, I see. Thank you. Father Mole went to see the cloud. Oh my, it's so dark. Cloud, are you the greatest of all? He asked. No, I'm not. When the wind comes, I'm blown away in seconds. The wind is the greatest, replied the cloud. Oh, I see. Thank you. Father Mole went to see the wind. Oh my, I'm about to be blown away. Wind. You are the greatest of all, right? He asked hopefully. No, I'm not. There is someone who doesn't blow away, even when I blow my hardest, said the wind. Is that true? asked Father Mole. Mr. Mole, if you are looking for the greatest, go to the Buddha statue, advised the wind. Though Father Mole was tired, he went to see the Buddha statue. Finally, I found it. Buddha statue, you are the greatest in the world, right? Father Mole asked. No, I'm not. If a mole dug a hole under my feet, I could not stand for even a minute. The Buddha statue answered. Do you think the mole is the best bridegroom in the world? Asked Father Mole. Definitely. <laughs> the Buddha statue answered. With laughter. Father Mole then went back to the Mole village. Honey, I found someone who is the greatest, he declared to his wife. Oh, really? Mother replied. Father Mole explained. The sun said, the cloud is the greatest. The cloud said, the wind is the greatest. The wind said, 
the Buddha statue is the greatest. And then I found out who is the greatest of all. Who is that? Mother Mole asked. It is one of us, the moles. Well then, we must choose the best bridegroom from among the greatest moles. Mother replied. As a result, Father Mole and Mother Mole met with Molar. Soon, Molly and Molar were married. Couldn't the greatest in the world be right next to you? Tiki Tiki Tembo A long time ago in China, there lived two brothers. One brother was named Tiki Tiki Tembo, Nosa Rimbo, Harikari Bushki, Pom Pom Mino, and the other one was named Ching. Mother and father loved both their sons, but they loved Tiki Tiki Tembo, Nosa Rimbo, Harikari Bushki, Pom Pom Mino more. One day, the two brothers were playing near a well. Suddenly, Ching fell into the well. Tiki Tiki Tembo, No Sa Rimbo, Hari Kari Bushki, Pom Pom Mino, ran to tell his mother. Hurry! Ching has fallen into the well. What shall we do? He cried. What? Ching has fallen into the well? Run and tell father! Shouted mother. They ran together to father. Hurry! Hurry. Ching, Ching has, has fallen, fallen into, into the, the well. well. What, what shall, shall we, we do? do? They cried. What? Ching has fallen into the well? Run and tell the gardener! Shouted father. They ran together to the gardener. Hurry! Hurry. Ching, Ching has, has fallen, fallen into the well. well. What, what shall, shall we, we do? do? They cried. What? Ching has fallen into the well? Shouted the gardener. So he got his ladder. Tiki tiki tembo, no sa rimbo, hari kari bushki, pom pom mino. His parents and the gardener ran to the well. The gardener put his ladder down the well. Ching was wet and cold, but he was happy to be alive. Some time later, the two brothers were playing near the well again. This time. Tiki tiki tembo, no sa rimbo, hari kari bushki, pom pom mino, fell into the well. Ching looked here and there for his brother. Suddenly, Ching heard his brother's voice. Help! Ching ran to tell his mother. Hurry! Tiki tiki tembo, no sa rimbo, hari kari bushki, pom pom mino, has fallen into the well. What shall we do? He cried. What? Tiki tiki tembo, no sa rimbo, hari kari bushki, pom pom mino, has fallen into the well? Run and tell father! shouted mother. They ran together to father. Hurry! Tiki tiki tembo, no sa rimbo, hari kari bushki, pom pom mino, has fallen into the well. What shall we do? they cried. What? Tiki tiki tembo, no sa rimbo, hari kari bushki, pom pom mino, has fallen into the well? Run and tell the gardener, shouted father. They ran together to the gardener. Hurry! Tiki tiki tembo, no sa rimbo, hari kari bushki, pom pom mino, has fallen into the well. What shall we do? They cried. What? Tiki tiki tembo, no sa rimbo, hari kari bushki, pom pom mino, has fallen into the well, shouted the gardener. So he got his ladder. Ching, his parents, and the gardener ran to the well as fast as they could, but it was too late. If tiki tiki tembo, no sa rimbo, hari kari bushki, pom pom mino's name was short like Ching, then he would not have drowned. From that time on, the Chinese learned an important lesson: never give your children such long names. That is why the Chinese have short names today.
Little Fox.